Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, June 18th, around 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2020. We have heavy snow in the mountains of the west. We have record ice in Greenland, and we have a volcano in Iceland about to blow. But the big story, water levels at the Great Lakes approach record high, as predicted. Water levels in the Great Lakes are approaching new records, creating all sorts of problems. Shoreline residents and cities are scrambling to cope as debris washes up and coastlines erode. Oh my, keep calm, it's boom time. And we're just getting started. Arizona wildfire, now the largest in the U.S. after doubling in size, burn scar can be seen from space. This is almost as big as the 416 fire we covered last year. A raging wildfire burning northeast of Phoenix, Arizona, is now the largest active fire in the nation, doubling its size since Tuesday and spurring more evacuations. It's been hazy here, but we have our own fires in our own area. Now, officials from the Tonto National Forest said Tuesday the blaze known as the bushfire has grown to almost 90,000 acres. With less than 5% containment, the wildfire has doubled in size since the start of the week and was originally sparked on June 13th. Officials call it a human-caused vehicle fire. Well, that is just one of dozens of fires burning across Northern Hemisphere. Sahara dust from Africa will stretch towards the U.S., putting the hurricane season on pause, and that's because of wind shear and dry air. And we have some visuals of this pulse coming through. Take a look. The bulk of that dust will hit the Caribbean on the 20th through the 24th, which will all but squelch any tropical development in that region. But it will cause cloud nucleation and some precipitation, just not tropical storm or hurricane development. So the dust is also, if you didn't know, the reason why it is so fertile over here in Brazil and on the Amazon, these micronutrients getting blown from the desert are actually creating the jungles of the Caribbean, Central America, all the way down to South America. It's rock dust for free. It's permaculture in action. Now, do you remember headlines like this back in 2019? Enjoy snow now. By 2020, it will be gone. Ha! Winter Northern Hemisphere snow extent has been increasing since the 1960s. Why don't they ever check themselves? It's anybody's guess, but we are following a narrative. Here are the facts. June storm in Wyoming drops four inches of snow near Pinedale. Yes, that's yesterday. Areas of snow this morning as mid-June winter storm approaches in Montana. That's today. Bogus Basin, Redfish Lake get two inches of snow overnight. Hello, Idaho. And June snow closes Beartooth Pass. Say it ain't snow, but it is. <laughs> Three days short of the official beginning of summer, snowy winter conditions close the Beartooth Pass at the Montana-Wyoming border to Long Lake. Adverse weather conditions were reported in Wyoming along the Beartooth Pass on U.S. Highway 212, and travelers near the state line should turn around and return to Red Lodge. That means you, buddy. Beartooth Highway is closed, and that's a boom. Yellowstone National Park also covered in the white global warming goodness. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Snow in mid-June. Yellowstone expecting snow on Wednesday. Ha! Oh, stay in that hole, Al. Here's the snowfall analysis from the last 24 hours. Ending 7 a.m. this morning. More snow has fallen. And we have some regions with up to 18 inches here in Utah. Heavy snow in Montana, over a foot. We have areas of 8 to 12 inches in Wyoming, in multiple places. And this snow pattern will continue. Antarctic sea ice loss explained in a new study. You know what the explanation is? Well, let's just come down here to the qualifying statement. Because of the large year-to-year -year variability in Antarctic sea ice extent, the scientists cannot be sure if anything they've said is actually true. Isn't that crazy? How that, that's your last sentence? And they claim that it's about to be explained in a new study? Let's go back over that. After the new study explains the sea ice loss, 
Because of the large year-to-year -year variability in Antarctic sea ice extent, the scientists cannot be sure if the ice in the Weddell Sea will in the short term recover. Hmm. So they have no idea what they're talking about. Looks like a article to me. Climate crisis alarm at record-breaking heat wave in Siberia. Well, the Guardian? Come on. It's a shard. All they ask for is money from the rip. Once someone asks for money before you read the article, you know. There's a problem. Unusually high temperatures in the region linked to wildfires, oil spills. What? How does an hot temperatures cause oil spills? Anyway, what they failed to show you was that the majority of the dark blue in this map is record cold. And they're worried about the red spot because it's global warming, right? If it was global cooling, they'd be worried about these blue spots. Coldest summer in Scandinavian history or spring. Coldest spring in Eastern Europe. Look at how cold it is in East Africa. Look how cold it is in India, Mongolia, so on and so forth. That's not part of the article. Neither is the record ice that has built over the last seven days in Greenland. We're talking extreme record-breaking ice. Mass gains during the melt season. The melt season begins here. Uh, the beginning of June, that's why this gray goes down, and you can see how far up here. Five gigatons in the first week of June, June 7th, five gigatons, and still gaining ice for all of mid-June, when the average says that we lose ice now. No one's reporting on that. I just did. Let's take a look at the Arctic. Whoa! The Arctic sea ice is completely covering the entire Arctic. There are no ships moving anywhere. There's up to 20 feet of ice right here in northern Greenland. And we are at multi-decadal norms. The same ice in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s as today. No catastrophic loss whatsoever. And while not record-breaking, we have temperatures in Virginia that are approaching record lows day after day after day. Here is the norm. Here are the numbers coming in the 14th, 15th, and 16th. You picking it up? The beast in the east, Australia to be smashed with snow, hail, fierce winds, and driving rains as winter kicks in. So what will be the weather like for you? Well, apparently the bomb is a liar, and so is the weekend Australian. They said there would be no snow this year. And winter is just starting. Australia Southeast will be hit with extreme cold weather, wind, and snow, which should not be happening, according to the mainstream media. Can you believe these people? Let me fix that. How the heck are you? <laughs> Let me fix this. Look at this hair. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. Look at that. It's almost like a big fat. Anyway, Victoria, Tasmania, and parts of New South Wales will see snowfall as well as gusty winds. Canberra, Victoria, Tasmania, all in for a wet weekend. But Sydney will be dry. Severe weather warning for damaging winds also has been put in place for Western Australia. Not only that, there's not supposed to be any snow, according to the experts. Now, cyclones in South Africa visit the deepest since 1907, and there is a cyclone coming to hit Australia. Could it be global warming? Probably not. Could it be the breakdown of the jet stream's meridional flow, the magnetic reversal, and the grand solar minimum inception? Perhaps. That's the way I'd go. Seismic update. No quakes of note. That's good news. Now, take a look at these sun-diving comets, one after the other. There's one right there. Boom. Disintegrate. Second one coming in. And it's about to exit. Watch this. Boom. Right up out there to the north. Let's watch that again. There's one, two, and phew, shoots right out the top. Totally amazing. How did we just do that? Okay. So two sun diving comets in the last 24 hours. We can see here on Lasco C3, we'll pick it up again right there. There's one of them. There's one. Boom. So clearly the C2 image is way better. 
And we're going to see this bright baby come in and then shoot off right here to the north. There it goes. Just gets whipped out there. Look at that baby. Beautiful. Now, Worldwide Volcano News Update. For June 17th, we have Pacaya, Fuego, Popo, Ducono, Rakianus Ridge. We've been warning about this for months, and it's about to happen. Grims Vaughton, Iceland. One of Iceland's most active volcanoes might be getting ready for a new eruption. Recent observations by scientists from the Icelandic Met Office monitoring the subglacial volcano led to this conclusion in the last 24 hours. In the last week, several measurements were done at Grimsvatn Volcano, and they discovered a currently very high output of SO2 gas in the southwest corner of the caldera at Grimsvatn, very close to the eruption sites of 2004 and 2011, VEI-4, and the shutdown of the airspace here. A clear alarming finding is that the SO2 levels are higher than when this volcano was actually erupting. This is the first time that they measured so much SO2 at the volcano in Iceland that it is not in an eruptive phase. And its presence is indicative of magma at a shallow level and an imminent eruption, says volcanologist Melissa Ann Pfeffer with a little bit of added information from Diamond. So that is what's happening. Grimm's Voten is about to blow. Are you preparing? Do you have a flight to Iceland? I doubt it. <laughs> but Grimm's Voten... Volcano, that is the southwestern portion of Iceland, is showing signs of getting ready for an eruption, as predicted over the last three months here on the channel. Now, let's talk about the rest of the volcanoes. We have Semaru, Sangay to 19,000, Semaru to 12,000, Sabankaya to 24,000, Popo to 22,000, and on and on. So the cosmic ray alert and increase over the last several days has resulted in the heating of magma in the subsurface, clearly. Now, the world's largest reptile egg was discovered in Antarctica, and it's Mosasaur, and it's a foot long. And its mama would have been over 23 feet long. This would be the Loch Ness Monster, the Mosasaur. If you're interested, links to every single article uh, and every piece of information that I've talked about tonight will be below the video in the description box. Now, a mysterious blue fireball. This is the headline from Live Science. Mysterious blue fireball streaks above Western Australia, puzzling astronomers. This is a lie. If you read the article, no one was puzzled. This is a uh, clearly a, a meteorite with high iron content, which caused the, the particular glow we saw here, the blue fireball, blue indicating iron. And no one was puzzled. It's just in the headline, which makes live science a shardicle factory. Take a look at this. Astronomers detect regular rhythms of radio waves with unknown origins. Well, the alien disclosure is coming, so they're just prepping us. A team of astronomers, including researchers at MIT, has picked up on a curious repeating rhythm of fast radio bursts emanating from an unknown source outside of our galaxy. In fact, 500 million light years away. What that means for you is that these people are never coming here, if they are people or aliens, whatever. A cosmic baby is discovered, and it's brilliant. What's not brilliant is the physics.org article, and we've called out physics.org for being the biggest shark factory on the world. Now, what they're claiming here is that this magnetar that they've discovered at 16,000 light years away is only 240 years old, which means that the signal that traveled 16,000 light years to get to us has only been hitting us for 240 years. How they know that is anyone's guess, because in their explanation, they use the terms like black hole and dark matter. And we all know what that means. Yes, it's a fairy tale. It's amazing. There may be more than 36 intelligent alien civilizations in the Milky Way, scientists say. Now, the guy moving his head right there is clearly not a scientist, and there's no way that you could assess this. They're saying that there's a breakthrough in the statistical analysis that has at one point purported that there's either one or two to a million civilizations, and they've narrowed it down to just 36 or more. 36 or more intelligent alien civilizations in the Milky Way. 
Now, the problem with that is it's, it's based on nothing. But the facts include that 6 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way exist. If 6 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way exist, that would mean that there are 6 billion planets with life on them, not 36. So however this article got funded is beyond me when this came out the same day. 6 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way. But only 36 of them have intelligent life based on no information whatsoever. <laughs> I hope you got something out of the video. The state of science is a fairy tale just like mainstream media, and just like your life. You're living the dystopian future that we've been warning about. The reason we started this channel is because Lee and I were sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when you're sick and tired. Learn how to grow food. Learn how to wildcraft. Learn how to wild harvest. Learn how to be self-sufficient, self-reliant. Learn how to hunt. Learn how to fish. Learn something. Do it now. Times are changing. There are no earthquakes, but there is record ice in Greenland right before summer. What a bummer. Share this with like-minded people. Don't believe the hype. Yes, Iceland is about to blow. Warn them about that too. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. We love you. Do it for the team. Be safe. Peace.